Welcome back to Introduction to Agroecology. This is Unit 9, and we're going to discuss some of the effects of biotic factors. Um, basically, we'll be looking at different interactions between uh, plants and animals and how it affects um, things. Here's an example of the first thing we're going to uh, talk about is parasitism. And basically, in this case, a parasite, one thing is in the middle of something else. So it's that spotted coral root is in the middle of other things, other plants that are there. But it's letting the other plant provide nutrients and moisture for it. And that's, uh, it's basically for a parasite. One thing lives off of another. And in this case, it's not hurting the other thing. And we'll get into some of the detail on that as we go through some of the slides. Um, uh, some of the biotic factors that we'll be talking about is that conditions that are made by and altered by organisms that affect plants. So in other words, one plant will do something or create a situation and that will affect other plants or, or animals as the case may be uh, as we're looking at this stuff. Um, a system was devised to try to classify these interactions um, by an Odom back in 1971. And as you read the uh, unit, it, hopefully this uh, PowerPoint will help you understand a little bit more. But it goes into a little bit more detail about Odom. He was a college professor. And as a research project, he created this classification system so that we might understand the types of interactions that are out there. Um, some of the environment types that are out there for organisms, it's organism to organi organism environment. So in other words, you're looking at a honeybee and a, uh, say, a cow, let's say, or a honeybee and a, a flower that it might be pollinating. It could be something from the organism to the environment back to the organism. So in other words, the organism will do something to the environment. It will put something into the soil, maybe to protect its area. And then another organism will come along and not like that area because of what that first organism did. So that's one type. And then all interactions um, that are out there either have a positive, negative, or neutral effect. In other words, the interaction might be something that one organism attracts another one, and it just likes to help out other organisms that might not be as good at doing something, and it just helps them. There's those types of uh, interactions. There's interactions where um, uh, a certain tree will put off a resin that it will keep everything else away from it because it wants all of the nutrients to itself. It doesn't want to share anything. Or it could be something like that parasite that we saw in the prior picture that it has nothing negative uh, effect. It's just they both live together in harmony. Um, looking at some of the organisms, some of the types, the interaction types, there's neutralism where neither organism is going to be affected by the other. There's competition interaction types in which each organism is fighting to get what it wants, which resource, okay? But in the long run, both organisms are probably going to be harmed. And it can be two of the same. It could be uh, two bees fighting for the same uh, pollen, nectar. Uh, so there's many different ways. And we'll see some examples as we go along in here. And then you'll see them out in real life, too. There's mutualism, um, where both are affected positively. So it might be two different organisms do things that help each other out. One can do one thing better than the other. So they both do their separate thing, and it helps each other. And then there's proto-cooperation, where um, both organisms will benefit from it. And Neither of them are going to be negatively impacted, even if there isn't an interaction. And we'll see an example of that, and it'll make more sense when we see that. And then there's communalism, where one is aided by the other, <coughs> but the organism suffers um, from there's no harm in aiding that other one. In other words, it'll come live in the environment, or it'll be in the environment. It's not hurting the environment it went to, but it's not going to hurt it either. Uh, there's a mentalism, um, which is an interaction where one organ organism will have a, a negative effect on another, 
but it doesn't benefit itself from it. In other words, it's just, it's, it's kind of like anemic, and that's where that word comes from. There's parasitism, which is one feeds off of the other, like that, that coral that we saw in the, um, that coral root we saw in the first picture. Uh, it feeds off another, but it doesn't kill it. In fact, it doesn't hurt it. So some of these, by the way, have overlap. That when you start looking at them, gosh, how do you know which one it is? Well, it's not so important. It's just the positive, negative, neutral is kind of what's important, no matter what you end up calling it. But it's just he came up, Odom came up with these classifications to try to help understand it a little bit better. And then the last one on this slide we're going to talk about is predation. Uh, predator is where that comes from. One organism kills another. In other words, uh, um, uh, one animal will kill another so it can eat it. Uh, a good example of that would be uh, fish in the ocean, that the smaller fish are eaten by the larger fish and so on. Um, on the organism environment to organism perspective, um, the interference is when one thing impacts, in, impacts the other organism's environment. Uh, and then there's two types. There's removal and addition interferences. And that removal is that something is taken from the environment that is needed by that other org organism, say the water, the nutrients, that type of thing. And then addition interferences where an organism is going to help another organism. It's going to be a positive effect. It could be negative or neutral, just depending on what type of interference it is. Um, one or more of those can occur at the same time, or they both can occur separately. And then it can include tissues or body from either or both of the organisms that it's affected. So uh, one organism can put something from it onto another organism. Um, for the interferences, when one is affecting the other one, for a removal interference, an organism will remove something from the environment that is needed by the other organism. The three types of interferences that could be in this category are competition, parasitism, and herbivory. And herbivory, uh, herbivores are the animals that eat, like a good example is uh, animals eating in a pasture, eating the grasses. Um, that is a removal interference because they're taking the grass that's there that was growing and they're eating it for their sustenance. Um, an additional one, addition interference, um, a good example of that is epiphytism. And basically it's when one lives on the body of another and you will see uh, one example. We have a picture coming up later. I believe it's a... a animals walking around, I believe it's a cow, and there's a bird that will sit on its back and just go around and go for the right instead of flying. It's just resting. But some examples of, of this type of interference is vanilla that's grown, algae will grow on top of water, moss that grows on rocks, and then um, there's some ferns that are out there that are like that too, that they'll grow in an area that they will be using the nutrients from another um, area or another plant. Um, they can occur at the same time. Some of this stuff is the same on any of these things. And it can include tissues or body from either or both of those organisms also, just like the removal interference could. Here, here is a parasitism uh, example, and here's where you see the bird eggs, and five of them are from one type of bird, and the sixth one is from a bird that's lazy and doesn't like to raise its own, uh, so it will take and move its egg to another uh, bird's nest, and this bird doesn't even seem to ever mind when they've studied this that it will come and put the egg there, um, the other bird won't even come back until the bird hatches. If it doesn't come back right when it hatches, then the new mother will make sure it's fed and stuff like that until that other bird comes back and gets it. In some cases, the other bird never comes back. The new one raises it and it goes out. But here's just an example of where it's really not hurting the other bird. I guess you just have to get a little bit more him or her, depending on some other father to get the food for it. Um, for removal interferences on competition, um, 
two two organisms it takes. Of course, all of these are two, are two or more organisms, but they take resources from a specific, and they're trying to get the same resource. So there's a finite amount of light, nitrogen and, and water, uh, is one good example. And because it's limited, they they have to share it. So one will fight for the other, trying to get more. Uh, monoculture, monoculture, agriculture. That's where you're using like corn or beans. You're not doing a bunch of different crops. It's not real uh, diverse. Um, there's intraspecific and interspecific, and intra and inter mean the same thing no matter where it's used. Between individuals of the same species is intra, and then between individuals of different species is inter. Um, competition is a very important concept in agroecology. A good example of this in plants is in a farm field. There are is the corn, soybeans, wheat, whatever it is you're growing in the field, but then it's competing against the weeds that want to try to get those same nutrients, the water, the nitrogen, and the light. So it's they're all trying to fight one another for that. So th that is a competition, and one of them's going to win out more than the other. Um, and all organisms must contend to survive the survival of the fittest, or if they're going to make it and multiply, it's the same even in animals. Um, Sometimes it's advantageous to avoid um, that type of a competition because there's some examples where you could get to a point where you could kill each other um, in terms of trying to have that competition. Uh, here's an example of that coral root again, of uh, that parasitism. Uh, here's an example of herbivory, and herbivores, the deer in this case, and they're eating not the grass, but they're eating off of a tree, so they're grazing. They, not everything has to be that. Um, you will see deer will also graze on a, a bunch of different things. Um, I'm sure most of you have seen arborvitaes. They're the tall, spirally, um, narrow, evergreen type plants, and in the wintertime, the deer seem to always come out of the forest preserves in the Chicago area and they will eat up as far as they can reach. You can tell how tall the deer were. If you look here, you can see too, the leaves are at the bottom. There's no leaves on it. And you see they're perfectly green. This is during the sum, spring or summer. And uh, because they're hungry, they're eating the leaves. Why do they like the leaves? Well, they like the taste of it, but there's also moisture in it too. So they're getting two things that they need. And they will wipe out totally when they do that. Um, parasitism, um, it's a removal, of course, because one thing's taken it from another. Uh, generally, it occurs in the same uh, species. One, one organism is going to get nourishment from another, uh, and it generally doesn't kill the host organism. In other words, the host organism produces enough of whatever that that other organism is taking that it will be fine. Um, ticks are a good example of parasitism. Um, and that the tick will get in in the height of an animal. It'll get in your head if you go through the forest. You always have to check your head for ticks when you come out. Um, they only live and can only survive if they're sucking the blood out of whatever it is that they're on, and that's how they can live. Um, herbivory, um, the, the deer, uh, the relationship is between the her herbivore and the plant that it eats. It's, of course, a removal interference, too. And that the biomass is what it removes, and then the nutrients. In that case of what we saw in the deer, the biomass was the leaf. The nutrient was the water within that. Um, at worst, it depletes the nutrients in the system. In this case, uh, if it keeps doing that, it won't necessarily kill the plant unless it keeps. It might not ever grow past a certain point because if the deer keeps eating the branches that are hanging there, it looked in this case like it just took the leaves, and that would have been less damage. But there are some things if they're... Um, sweet enough. In other words, it isn't real old wood. The deer will even eat the new parts of the branches and it might not ever get larger, so it could, it could stunt the growth and eventually possibly could kill it. But generally, it just depletes the nutrients and then next year, it'll try to um, reproduce and put more leaves out on the buds. <clears throat> Epiphytism, uh, it's an addition interference. Um, the organism lives on the body of another organism. It doesn't take any nutrition from it. It just kind of goes for the ride, and it likes the structure and the habitat of whatever it is on. Examples of that is algae, moss, ferns, and then the vanilla. 
Um, and it would be good to, to Google. I didn't get a picture of it, but there's some great pictures of um, how vanilla will grow up on another organism just using it for its structure. And then it'll have its pods, the cocoa pods, or the vanilla pods, excuse me, vanilla bean pods that will be, there are beans in the pods, I guess I should say. And um, it's a tremendously huge market for those uh, areas that vanilla grows in. Uh, more in South, Central and South America. Uh, here's an example of mushrooms. There's some, and some moss growing on rocks. A plant could be growing on there too, other than the moss. I've seen trees growing out of uh, rocks too. Um, another additional uh, interference is a symbiosis. Uh, it's an addition interference. Two organisms make additions to the environment. They're doing separate things, but they benefit when they next to each other and they use the same things. Examples of that is proto-cooperation which um, you don't, neither of them would die if they didn't have each other, but they survive better if they have each other. Um, mutualism, where they help each other for optimal growth, they both benefit from it. Uh, it possibly could be survival depending on what type of mutualism. And then allopathy, which produces a compound that inhibits or stimulates an impact on organism. In other words, one organism will produce some type of a compound, some type of a, uh, item that will keep or help another organism. Here's an example of proto-cooperation, a honeybee pollinating uh, flower. Honeybee um, benefits because it gets the nectar. The flower gets it because it gets pollinated and it can grow and create a seed eventually. Um, Proto-cooperation, like I said earlier, it's not essential for either to survive. It's not obligatory for survival. Basically, it's the same thing, another way to say the same thing. And then we saw the picture of the honeybee <clears throat> and then the plants that it pollinates. And one honeybee will pollinate many, many, many plants. Uh, here's an example of mutualism. And it's, here's an example of a hummingbird hawk moth drinking from a dianthus. So it's taking some of the liquid out of the dianthus and getting its nourishment, and it's helping by getting rid of some of that from the dianthus. Um, it helps each other for optimal growth. Um, could possibly a, be a survival uh, item. Some of the examples um, that we have is uh, so soil dwelling fungi, so fungi that grows in the soil. Uh, and then the relationship that happens between legumes and um, bacteria within the ground. The legumes are stuff like alfalfa wheat. That's the plant above the ground, and it's benefiting from the rhizobium bacteria that's in the ground, that biota that's in the ground that we talked about in one of the prior units. And then here are the attributions.